Hi everyone. We are again so thrilled to have you as part of our Wine 101 KosherWine.com Academy class. We have a very short four weeks together with a lot to cover, so I hope that this little pre-recorded video is a great way to get you started with some of the basics. All of this will be covered in our live sessions and touched on, but this is to give you a foundation. You can watch before our live sessions or even after um, just to refresh. But just to get us going, what is wine? In its most basic form, wine is when yeast consumes the sugar in a grape that causes fermentation to happen. Now, what trips up a lot of students is why do people say that there's pear in wine or pineapple in wine or apple in wine? And we're going to talk about that more in depth, but know that all of the aromas that you're getting out of your wine are coming from the grape. There's compounds like phenols that actually will produce these aromas during either the fermentation or winemaking process or the aging process as well. Those are called your primary, secondary, and tertiary flavors. But don't worry about that right now. Um, we will go more in depth. And that little aroma wheel that you have both linked into the resource section and as part of your case will be helpful in just helping you identify maybe what you're smelling as you're smelling the wine. But in its most basic form, wine is when yeast is consumes grape juice and turns it into alcohol. Of course, there are three different types of wine, not including um, ports or sherries or your fortified wines. But typically, you're looking at a white wine. This is a wine that is made from a, a grape without any skin contact. So red grapes can make white wine. The skins just aren't involved. So white wine is when there's no grape contact, contact because save for a couple or very, very few grape varieties, um, all grape juice is white. Red wine is when juice is fermented and then put in contact with the red grape skins to get flavor and color out of their skins. There's a lot of tannin, for example, in red grapes. And that's why we say sometimes in our uh, red wines, there's a lot, there's a higher tannic content. We'll talk a little bit more about those terms to know, but uh, basically red wine is when ju the grape juice is fermented in contact with the grape skins. And sometimes the color and the amount of extraction that comes out um, is really based on the winemaker preference and how long they want to keep that contact going, which brings us to a rosé wine. So rosé is fermented in contact with red grape juice, but only for a limited period of time, a much shorter period of time, sometimes only a few hours to get just a light blush color. So what's the difference between kosher or non-kosher wine? Actually, as part of the winemaking process, nothing. It's just for a wine to be considered kosher, the entire winemaking process from start to finish, crushing to bottling must be handled by Sabbath observant Jews and no non-kosher findings or additives can be used. But as far as the grape to bottle process, the winemaking processes that we're gonna talk about, all of that is the same. So wine is wine and good wine is, is great wine. Some key terms you might want to know and you might hear us talk about. Aromas, so that's the smell of the wine and we have that aroma wheel as a handy guide. This can, these can vary from fruity to floral to earthy. And then of course the body of a wine. This one's tricky and we'll go more in depth about it, but really it's the weight and texture of the wine in your mouth. Think about if you're sipping skim milk versus 2% milk or whole milk and how that feels. So that's how we can range wines from light to medium body or to full body. Can't forget that one. And then acidity. So that's the level of tartness or crispness in a wine. A lot of our favorite dry white wines like Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling, you might say are really highly acidic. Um, you can always tell this by maybe how much it's making you salivate, but this can definitely affect the freshness of a wine or the feeling of freshness or balance, and sometimes even impact the amount of sweetness that you might taste on your palate. Of course, tannins, these are a component found in red wines like I just mentioned, and they can contribute to bitterness or that drying feeling in your mouth, but they also allow a wine to age well. And then sweetness. This is the amount of residual sugar that is left in the wine after the fermentation process. So if there's residual sugar left, you're going to have a sweeter wine. That's how these wines can range from bone dry to really, really sweet. Of course, when we're tasting wine, 
there's a few key steps that we're gonna talk about together in our live tastings. First, before you start sipping, always look and observe the color, the clarity, because that's gonna tell you a little bit about the wine. How full do you think it looks? Do you get nice viscosity or legs on it? Um, we're gonna talk about the different colors of wine, but always make sure you observe a little bit first and kind of take a mental note as to what that wine looks like. Are you seeing any sentiment, sediment, which sometimes happens in an aged wine? Smell. You want to inhale deeply and identify any notes that you can. There's no wrong answers. That's the great thing about wine. Everybody can smell something a little different. For example, with this one, it's a Cabernet. I'm going to smell some cassis. I'm going to smell some mint. I'm going to also smell a little bit of oaky notes like vanilla or caramel from the barrel aging. We're going to talk about that too. Don't worry. And then, of course, taste. Really spending a minute to experience it on your palate. Are you getting acidity? Which I am. <laughs> what aromas are you getting? Um, licorice, cassis, red currant. It's like a dried cranberry, right? right? Think about what it is on your palate and how you're enjoying it. And then of course the finish. So pay attention to the lingering aftertaste and the overall impression of the wine. We love wines that have a nice long lingering finish that are still giving us little gifts in our mouth, even after we've taken that sip. Finally, as you prepare for this class or just wondering how you store your wine, make sure that you keep it in a cool, dark place away from direct sunlight and temperature fluctuations. This is gonna be really important for uh, your wine to be able to stay in the bottle for a longer period of time without getting too much oxygen to it. Um, or drying out that cork, which could impede the wine. So you also want to maintain a proper humidity if possible. If you don't have a basement, I'm in Florida, I don't have a basement. So I always try to store my wine on an inside wall where it might not be exposed to um, sunlight, you know, beating up against the side of the house and coming in on an outside wall. Also make sure that you uh, store your bottles with corks horizontally so that that uh, cork is moist. And of course your screw top bottles. I love bottles with screw tops. Those can stand right up just nice in a cool, dry, dark place or um, keep your whites in a wine fridge if you have it. And that would be ideal. We are, are looking so forward to seeing you and meeting with you um, in some of our live sessions. Feel free to use the discussion forum for any questions that you have in the meantime.